It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of September 8th, 1995. We got five movies to look at today, so let's just jump on into it, and we'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo in the comedy To Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Wesley Snipes, he's been a killer and a commando. Patrick Swayze, he's been a heartthrob and a hero. But these tough guys are about to face the most physically challenging roles of their careers. Let's give it to him, girls. Meet Vita Boem. Enchanté. Why are you crying? Maybe she just found out Menudo broke up. Miss Noxima Jackson. Jesse's daughter. And their protege, Chichi Rodriguez. I'm the Latino Marilyn Monroe. I got more legs than a bucket of chicken. They were headed for Hollywood. Think of it as easy rider and dresses. On a sacred mission. We must take this message from Miss Newmar with us across the land. What's going on right here? A celebration for the last year. So bring but along the way, they had an unexpected stop. You know what you Korean girls want? Now, they're stranded in a strange land. Well, ladies, welcome to Snydersville. And you thought the dust bowl was over? This is the presidential suite. That must be one of those bad presidents. You got beat up by a girl. <laughs> and before they leave... Do you like my nails? They may turn this town from drab to utterly, utterly fabulous. Universal Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present... How do I look? Like the Miami sound machine just exploded all over you. Wesley Snipes. Look, I'm sorry about the way the Civil War turns out. Patrick Swayze. I gather you like hitting ladies. Some ladies need to get hit. And John Leguizamo. I gotta go. I got To Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Notable significance of this movie is that this is actually the first real Hollywood movie to depict drag queens. And some people may go back to something like Some Like It Hot, Tootsie, or Mrs. Doubtfire, but... Those movies are very different compared to this one. There's no backstory of why these guys are doing this that's related to something that completely different from... What they, what they normally would have done, but this is something that these people in this movie do for a living, and essentially what this movie is, is a remake of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which we've already talked about in a previous episode from the year before. It was a big cult hit, and of course, why not remake it and have Steven Spielberg be one of the producers behind it, and you know what? It's a pretty damn good movie. I mean, really what makes the film work is that pairing of Wesley Snipes, Patrick Swayze, and John Leguizamo as these drag queens, you can just look at this movie and see how much fun they're having with this movie, and it shows on screen. It's amazing that these guys are just having the time of their lives playing these characters, and it's definitely showing in here. Like, honestly, this is probably my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. I mean, I like him in Ghost, but um, this is the one where he looks like he's having the time of his life, and it's, he's really funny in this movie, and so is everybody else. So is the other three guys, the other two guys, I should say, Wesley Snipes and John Leguizamo. Like I said, they do, they are just having the time of their life playing these characters, and the movie just works on so many levels. To think this was actually the movie that propelled Leguizamo into the film career that he has now, seeing as how Super Mario Brothers was supposed to do that two years prior. But um, as far as the story goes, it's a fish-out-of-water storyline. It's not the worst, but it's very predictable. But at the same time, it's nothing too harmless. There are a ton of laughs all around. There's a lot of solidly funny moments in this. And it's just good fun. It's a fun, enjoyable comedy with its heart in the right place. Three great leading performances to carry it all the way through. And a lot of funny moments to pull it through. It's definitely something very fun and enjoyable to watch. Take it for what it is, and you'll have the time of your life with it. It's a really funny movie. I really enjoyed it a lot. Too Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Just really funny movie. So, uh, With that said, let's move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is The Tie That Binds. Everybody has a hard time with adoption. That's how I know you're for real. If you were raring to go, my red flag goes up. That girl there, she just up behind over there. Oh, that must be Jamie. Yeah, she likes to play. She looks just like you. They wanted a family. We're gonna adopt a little girl, and you won't believe how beautiful she is. They opened their hearts and brought a child into their home. I want to take you to the sunflowers. That's beautiful. 
She did great. <laughs> Stop at nothing. They're coming back for me. To find her. God! You want to strike down the other one, Dad? Do it now! Look, we don't care who the birth parents are. Just some insight into their background. Are they criminals? Are they cultists? You know the social workers don't tell us a lot about the child's history. Oh. Jamie, what'd you do with her? I was just doing my job. You have to help us. We're all together. And the parents who've grown to love her. Who are you looking for? My little daughter. Her parents didn't leave her forwarding address, so I... Must fight. I'm her parents. To break the tie... Jamie! ...that binds... We're blood. Janie, John, and me. Blood needs blood. Our father now. family. In another one of those movies that looks like it could have been so easily been the Lifetime Movie of the Week or the Movie of the Week on NBC or any of the CBS, ABC, any of the major networks because really is there anything about this movie that's really considered feature needed to be seen on a big screen? I mean yeah, you got Daryl Hannah, you got Keith Carradine, you got Morgan Ke Maura Kelly from The Lion King in here. It's written and directed by Wesley Strick, who it's directed by Wesley Strick, who also wrote Arachnophobia, Batman Returns, and Cape Fear. But really, is there anything about this movie that looks like it needs to be feature length? I mean, I haven't unfortunately I haven't seen the movie, so I can't really say too much about it. But judging by the reviews I see for it, it's not. Ducking that positive. It only, it only got 8% freshness on Rotten Tomatoes, and that is not so good. And um, the trailer kind of gives away everything that's going to happen in this movie. I mean, these characters are not that smart. Not even the, the, the kids' real parents, the kids' adopted parents. Nobody in this movie is really smart whatsoever. Ever. And it's just like, where's the fun factor in this? Why am I supposed to get enjoyment out of this? Like, there's nothing about this that looks interesting or anything unique whatsoever it looks like a watered down version of the hand that rocks the cradle and even then that movie wasn't that great so yeah i haven't seen it so i can't really say too much about it but um i'm not i'm highly doubting it's anything more than that trailer is showing so uh let's move on to the next movie shall we and that is uh tom uh tom, tom berenger toy boat toy boat <laughs> tom berenger and barbara hershey in the last of the dogmen State prisoners went off the highway. Three escaped. A man faced with a mystery. They're dead. All of them? And a woman searching for the past. Somebody got to those men before I did. Are about to uncover a secret. Unbelievable. Hidden for 130 years. No one must ever find out. All right, man, let's move out. Tom Berenger, Barbara Hershey. <laughs> Last of the Dogmen, rated PG. Special sneak preview, Saturday and Sunday. So interestingly enough, this is actually the first film directed by Tab Murphy, which is a name you might not be too familiar with, but you've definitely seen his work. Uh, before this, he did uh, my Be he did uh, Gorillas in the Mist. He wrote the story for that, but most notably, he worked on the story he worked on the story for several Disney movies, including The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Tarzan, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. He's written for he wrote Brother Bear. He wrote for Superman, Batman, Apocalypse, Batman Year One. He's written for the TV series Thundercats, Teen Titans Go. He wrote a Scooby Doo movie. He wrote the infamous Bobbleheads movie. I mean, this is a guy that is mostly associated with animation overall, but um, this is the last live action film I think he, of note that he was involved with and. I unfortunately have not seen it, so I can't really say too much about it, but um, I've seen worse. I mean, it definitely doesn't look like anything really spectacular or anything, but it definitely doesn't look as bad as some of the other movies that have been similar to this that kind of try to be a knockoff version of something like Last of the Mohicans or something like that. But but um, 
I mean, it could be something interesting. You got Wilfred Brimley as the narrator in this. You have Kurtwood Smith also in the film. I'm trying to see who else is in here. Um, yeah, that's a couple of the other note. That's the only other notable names I see here. But um, like I said, it doesn't look like it's a bad movie per se. It just doesn't look like a memorable film. Honestly, it's like. It might be good for a one-time watch, but honestly, I don't really feel the need to go see this at any point. So so that's Last of the Dogmen. Let's move on to the next movie, and that is National Lampoon's Senior Trip. ...of losers sitting on our butts playing video games and watching MTV. That's not true! National Lampoon's Senior Trip. Let's party! The seniors of Fairmount High are on their way to... Washington. Come on, hop in. <laughs> Let's do some van damage. <laughs> I'm here to save you. Huh? I decided that I don't want to go to college a virgin. Oh, it looks like you're going to be a mother. Pop quiz, hot shot. You have 10 students in a store containing your high school principal. What do you do? What do you do? With Matt Frohler as the principal. I'm not going to have you people make a fool out of me. And Tommy Chung as the bus driver. Out in the dark. What's the magic words? Please. National Lampoon's. Daddy, you should go. Senior trip. Yay! Pull my finger. Good one, Miyoski. So the director of this, Kelly Makin, is actually more associated with a comedy group of Kids in the Hall, and that's why you see Kevin McDonald in there. But you know, it's interesting. You have the Kids in the Hall mixing in with National Lampoon, trying to create essentially a '90s equivalent to Animal House, and Needless to say, I don't think they were that successful by it. I mean, I see on here it's got I see on here it's got a, a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but I don't want to say it's a terrible movie, but it certainly is not one is not up that there on that level of Animal House or some of the best National Lampoon movies. But there were moments in here that I did chuckle at, and it's interesting to see some of the early film works of people like. Uh, Jeremy Renner, this is actually the first film that he ever started. Like I said, Kevin McDonald, Matt Frewer, Tommy Chung is in this. Uh, most notably, some of you may not notice, but uh, if you know who this person is in real life, you may have recognized her, but you may recognize her voice. Tara Strong, the voice of Twilight Sparkle, Timmy Turner, a bunch of prolific, a bunch of notable characters in animation is in this movie. And uh, you also have Danny Smith. Uh, just some notable, is a couple of notable names in here, but... As far as I know, the movie, it's, as far as I remember, the movie itself was nothing too special. I saw this a long time ago, and uh, that trailer really did not do anything spectacular for me. It was just kind of like, hey, let's make Speed references, because Speed had just come out at that time, and that was a big hit. And then, hey, fart jokes and all that kind of stuff. It's that kind of humor where sometimes it can work, other times it really doesn't. And a good majority of the jokes in here are not really all that strong, but at the same time... I've seen much worse comedies like this. I mean, there are moments in here that I do think are funny. I certainly don't think it's as worthy of a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, it's just like, I won't go that far. I mean, it's just not really all that engaging. It's not really all that funny. And there's no real pr point to this by the end of the movie. Like, there's no real, what's the what's the main focus I'm supposed to take from this by the end of the film? And the movie doesn't really have a good idea of it. It's just like... Let's just go out of let's just go gonzo crazy and hopefully we'll get some good good laughs out of it and sometimes it works but most times not so much so uh, that's my thoughts on National Lampoon's senior trip so let's move on to the last movie that we have here and that is Nico Icon from Fox Lorber Home Video Nico Icon she had it all a pop culture icon of the sixties beautiful talented. Tormented. From supermodel to chanteuse, femme fatale to drug addict. She was almost proud of the fact that the teeth were rotten, the hair was grey, and you know, her skin was bad, and she had needle tracks all over. A doomed superstar whose life was filled with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. 
And obviously it's not a good sign when I can't find anything on Wikipedia about this movie, so I have to go to Google to do it. Uh, Nico Icon basically follows the German model singer and actress Nico, who is most renowned with her associations with Andy Warhol and the Velvet Underground. She gained attention for her icy, Teutonic looks and later her unusual voice, but was plagued with depression and drug addiction. And uh, the performer is presented in film, in a film clips and photos. And the film also features interviews with associates such as singer-songwriter Jackson Brown and musical collaborator John Cale. And that's really all I know about this film. I don't really know too much about the film itself because I haven't seen it. But um could be an interesting story. It has some good reviews for it. And it is very interesting to hear more about these about this time period, especially when you have somebody like people like Velvet Underground and Andy Warhol involved in here. So there is definitely something here that could be very interesting to talk about with this. But... um I'm not going to rush out to see it right now, but it's definitely one that has my curiosity on it. But um, like I said, it's not something I'm going to rush out to see anytime soon. But it is notable for, for a number of reasons. So I definitely want to check it out at some point. So uh, yeah, so that's Nico Icon. So with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next time we meet, we'll have um, seven new movies to look at, including Spike Lee's Clockers. We also have Hackers and also the cult teen comedy Angus, also Mute Witness. Unstrung Heroes, The Stars Fall on Henrietta, and Cold Blooded. So seven movies to look at next time around, and we'll delve into those on the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and until then, as always, take care.